everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a little bit of a different setup because I'm doing something that's kind of messy. Today I'm going to be making a moss pole and planting it in with a plant that I recently got in the mail. I'm going to show that to you in just a second, but first I wanted to say if you like the technique that I'm using to make this moss pole, you can definitely watch the tutorial. I will link it up in the cards so that you can see the original moss pole video. It is a technique where I use sheet moss and a PVC pipe and any kind of like rope fastener or wire you want and then from there the plant kind of just does what it does. So there are a lot of different ways to make a moss pole. This is just one that I've done in the past. I am open to trying out new techniques soon but this is one that I already know how to do and I already had some of the supplies sitting around so it just worked out that way. All right, so let's get into the video. All right, so the plant that I'm going to be repotting and staking on a moss pole is this gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous Monstera Peru. I am more than obsessed with this plant. It is so beautiful. I put out a little call to action on my Instagram that I was looking for these, and my friend Oscar actually owns a shop called Plant That Plant, and they're based out of Europe, but I was actually able to order this plant from them and this plant is so big look at how big it is just sitting here and I will have you know that I actually cut off a lot of the plant too to propagate because you know you know me I like full plants so I already am propagating it and getting it started it took about a week to arrive here and it arrived in literally perfect condition it was as if I took it home that day from the store I could not believe how beautifully it was packed and how well it traveled for an entire week some of these leaves are massive look at this it is so big like compared to my head I cannot believe how massive that is. So I'm excited to make a moss pole for this because I know that they do super well as a climbing plant. It could technically be a trailing plant and be really beautiful, but I just kind of want it to be a climbing plant instead. So like I said, I'm going to be making a moss pole, but I figured I would show off the plant first so that we know what we're working with. As you can see, the root system is pretty small. It is very developed, but it's not like super big because it arrived bare root is a lot easier to see what I'm working with and I'm going to be potting it probably in this pot. So great amount of room and also with the moss poles that I make, the moss pole will kind of be stuck in the soil just a little bit. Um, this is a PVC pipe. I got a very thin one this time because I know that the moss usually bulks it up a little bit and PVC pipe is a medium that you can put in your pot that won't rot when it gets wet. So that is usually why I choose PVC pipe. There's a lot of other kinds of plant stakes you can use. So I'm going to pan the camera down so you can just watch what I'm doing and I'll talk you through the process. Using SheBoss always makes this process easier since it's already laid out flat for you. I like to lay out the sheet moss to be as long as I'll want it to be on the pole and then start to roll it. I usually use a different kind of sheet moss which is a lot thinner but this one worked just fine. Make sure that you have your string, wire, or whatever you use ready to go so that you don't have to resituate the moss a million times. I wrap the string up and down the section I'm working with really tight so that it is hidden in the thickness of the moss. This also helps it not to slide up and down the pole later on. To finish off a piece of string, I just tie the string to itself in a tight knot. It's pretty simple once you finish off the first section. Basically, just keep repeating what you did the first time over and over again until the moss pole is full. At the end of the process, I took a look around the pole to see if there were any empty spots and I filled them in with the remaining moss pieces. Okay, so my moss pole is finished. I will have a video where I go through detailed instructions and a supply list linked down below. And now let's get to potting up this moss pole with my plant. I've brought in a potting table because I think that this will be a lot easier for you to see me repotting it with this moss pole. So basically what I'm going to do is repot this plant as usual or pot up the plant there's no soil on it right now it'll be business as usual and then when i actually put the plant in the pot i will just also be putting the moss pole in the pot so that is really the only difference between these two processes so let's get started doing that this soil mixture is one that i actually made on my channel a couple of weeks ago the most frequently asked question on my channel 100% is my soil mixture 
And I actually made a video where I go through the entire process of making my soil. So I think it's a pretty informative video and helpful just to show you my process because I know when I was getting started with plants and even now, I'm always curious as to how people situate their soil or how they don't situate soil because there are some people in the plant community who are using like a semi-hydro system, which I think is super interesting. So if you are still using soil, I have a soil mixture video and I basically made the soil with you and showed you how I check to make sure that it is well draining enough. I thought it was pretty informative, so if you are interested, I will have that linked up in the cards and down below for you. So as I'm potting this plant up, I'm kind of situating it towards the side of the pot so that I can leave room for my moss pole. And I have left the moss off on the bottom half, or not half, much less than half, but I've left moss off of this little bottom section that I know will be going into the soil just because I want to minimize any chances of like extra moisture staying in the soil for longer than necessary. I didn't do that with all of my moss poles actually and my other plants that have the moss all the way down to the bottom are totally fine. So I think it just depends on where you live and the level of moisture in your environment. But as we all know and as I've mentioned so many times, it is extremely dry where I live so we don't really have too many issues with that kind of stuff. So I've situated the plant and the pole in here. So now all I have to do is just fill up the rest of the plant with the soil. How many of you have a moss pole situation at home? I would love to know. Comment down below if you have moss poles, if you enjoy using a moss pole. So some people might be wondering out there, what is the point of the moss pole? And is it really important for my plant? Is it necessary? And I'm here to tell you that it's not necessary 100% of the time. A lot of the time people will make it sound like your plant absolutely needs to have certain things in order to survive and be happy. And I'm gonna tell you right now that, and maybe some people will disagree with me, and that's totally fine, but a moss pole is kind of a luxury for a house plant. Basically, our house plants come from the wild as we know, and in the wild, there are structures like a moss pole in nature, like trees or other plants themselves, that certain plants that are epiphytes can grow up. And basically, when your plant has something to grow up, when certain plants have something to grow up, because not all plants are epiphytes, they will grow bigger, stronger, healthier growth. The monstera that I started from literally one leaf um, I put a moss pole on her in January, and I think it wasn't until the last two leaves that she kind of registered that there is a moss pole there. I've noticed that the aerial roots are starting to dig into the moss, which is incredibly exciting, and also, I don't think it's a coincidence that since that happened, the two leaves that have come out have been significantly bigger than the rest of them. So definitely if you want that huge growth, if you want to see your plant continue to get bigger and bigger with every leaf, I would consider a moss pole for your epiphytes. They're super easy to make. You just saw me make it. That took me about 15 minutes. Sped up, I don't know how long that took, but only 15 minutes actually working on that. And if you use other methods, it might even be a lot quicker. So it just depends on what method you like and what works for you. I personally really like that my moss poles are green because they tend to blend in with everything a lot easier. But if you make a moss pole out of something like sphagnum moss, it'll just be like a light brown color, which is a plant earthy color too. So if you prefer that, definitely no shame in the game of what moss pole technique that you decide to use. Okay, so can't get too off track here. I have now put all of the soil in that I want to put in. I'm learning that I need to not put so much soil in my pots because I was overfilling my pots for most of my plant journey and I'm still kind of dealing with the effects of that because every time I water, it's like the water level goes up so high. Just do yourself a favor and don't fill up the pot all the way to the edge like I have done in the past. I like to leave about an inch between the edge of the pot and where the soil ends so that there's plenty of room for the water to rise and um, there's no issues with like overspilling. What the heck do you do with the plant? Now that it's in the pot, we've got the moss pole here. Well, the plant is not going to just automatically rise and become attached to the moss pole. You have to do some tethering. 
So what I have done in the past is I had some plant ties that were covered in like a rubber casing so that the wire wouldn't dig into the plant. And those are really awesome. I have those linked down below in my Amazon storefront. But I also recently found these plant ties. Basically, it's a glorified twist tie and it comes in a package that looks like this. I'm not gonna, we're gonna ruin the focus if I do that. But basically it's coated in this plastic so the wire will never come in contact with the plant itself. Sometimes the wire can damage the plant if it's pulling it too tight and we don't want that at all. So something like a coated wire is really great to use to tether your plant to the moss pole. You don't need to tie it super tight. The plant will stay. It's not like the plant is super heavy. So basically what I do is I start from the bottom and I think about where a natural place for the plant to climb would be. And that is definitely going to be on aerial roots if they have them which epiphytes do have them, you just have to identify where they are. So because this plant has multiple stems, it has two big stems, I'm going to do this one stem at a time, and I'll turn this around so that you can get a better look, and then just kind of do it backwards. I'm going back to my teacher days where you like hold the book up and you read it from like this, like you know how they do that? I always wondered how they were able to do that, but number one, it's because they probably memorized the book because they read it so much, and number two, teachers are superheroes. I take it, I stretch it as tall as it will go, and then basically just wrap the tie around. And actually, I just noticed this, these ties are a bit short, they're probably about six inches, so sometimes I will take two ties and wrap them together, and then it's a 12 inch piece, or maybe a little bit under that, like eight inches. But with this moss pole, since it's so thick, I can't exactly fit the tie around it all the way with enough slack to like twist it. If you were using the coated wire, like the rubber coated wire, you would cut off however much you need so you'd be able to decide, you know, how much you actually want. But because um, obviously these pieces are pre-cut, it's a little bit different. So I'm taking this piece and I'm situating all of the tie parts at the back because I don't want that at the front. We don't want to look at that. So you can't really see it too well. Now down here, I didn't tie it super tight, but I definitely made sure that it was secured just for reference. I mean, I can't like physically show you how tight I'm tightening it. Tight, I'm tightening it. Incredible. I can't physically show you how tight I'm tying it, but just know that I can like pull the plant up and down a little bit without it rubbing an excessive amount. So I'm just going to keep on doing that. And actually I'm noticing that this moss pole is leaning a little bit more than I would want. So I'm going to just put some soil in the back here and just pat it down pretty tightly so that it serves as a support just for this pole so it's not leaning back. We don't want it to lean back. There we go, that's much better. I'll do just a little more. I might get some questions about whether or not I water my moss pole. I do water the moss pole. I missed it when I remember, but it's honestly, it's not a huge priority for me to make sure that it is consistently wet. I know that for some people that's like very shocking and maybe I'm doing it wrong, but my plants have been really happy despite all of that. I mean, I think just having something to climb up is really important for them. A lot of people use trellises. They don't even make a moss pole out of it. So as long as your plant has something to crawl up, I think that it'll be fine. I definitely wish that I was better about keeping the moss pole wet, but just with where I live and my conditions, it's just kind of difficult to keep things um, moist for super long amounts of time. So. Definitely when I water the plant, I get the moss pole like soaking wet as well. And everything seems to be working out just fine. So you can see here that the plant kind of has a curl to it. And I want to correct that so that it is straight up. So now I'm just tethering this piece the same way that I did with the other one. And obviously there's only gonna be a few ties on this one because it's a lot shorter. As you can see, she is all tied up to the moss pole, looking so beautiful. I'm so happy with how this turned out. 
Now this is what the back looks like. I'm going to be just trimming off all of this excess here. I'm hoping that eventually this piece will come out and lay flat, but for now, we're gonna see her underside. <laughs> all right, now that she is all tied up on her moss pole, I'm going to give her a good water. I do like to water my plants after I repot them just to get those roots settled in, especially when it is going from bare root to potted. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something from it or it was helpful for you or even just a little bit entertaining. <laughs> if you're not already, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel for more planting content. There's definitely a lot more where this came from and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!